Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Sean Guasamacchia. We are talking PGA golf as the Florida swing continues. It's in Orlando at Bay Hill Golf Course, the Arnold Palmer Invitational. We are joined now by Jim Sanas of FanDuel, who will give us his six DFS plays for this weekend. Jim, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. It should be a pretty fun event for this weekend. We got Rory McIlroy in the field, and I think the ideal approach for this week is to go with a balanced lineup after Rory, which will definitely slant the way we view these picks for today. But I think that Rory's kind of the key talking piece, so excited to break him down. How are you doing today, Sean? Doing well there, Jim. Uh, looking forward to the Arnold Palmer Invitational with Rory back in play this weekend. And you mentioned it, world's number one golfer, playing some of the best golf of his career, six Straight top five finishes. He's now going back to Bay Hill, where he won in 2018, and he's your number one DFS play for this weekend. Yeah, Sean, we talked about this last time Rory was in a field, but my philosophy right now for DFS is keep using Rory McIlroy until it stops working, and like you said, it hasn't stopped working yet. Six straight top fives for Rory McIlroy. The last time he was outside the top five was in September. It is no longer September. It has been a long time since we saw Rory McIlroy not just like fail, but like not be an elite level DFS play. And he's also great statistically for this course because he ranks 34th or better in all four of my key stats. Uh, he is a tremendous approach player, as you know. And the one concern you could have with McElroy in general is putting because he's occasionally not as great there. But this is Bermuda putting surface for this weekend. And that is actually McElroy's best surface from a putting perspective. So even the one potential negative he could have at other courses is not a negative for him at Bay Hill. Not just that win. It's also had a couple other top six finishes in the past three trips here to Bay Hill. So he's going to be very popular this week. I guarantee you McElroy will probably be at about 45% of rosters in tournaments, but my goal is to be overweight on that because I think that he is just a, a rock solid play with tremendous upside. His cutouts are better because this is a bit of a smaller field this weekend too. So I see no real reason to pivot off of Rory. I think that he does dictate kind of your lineup here because he is super expensive. We don't want to go too top heavy, but I am willing to make that uh, sacrifice for sure and lock in Rory McIlroy as often as I can at $12,200. Yeah, the way Rory is playing right now, Jim, you mentioned it. He's a no-brainer there. A six top five finishes for Rory playing some of the best golf of his already, what would you say, Hall of Fame career. So that's saying a lot there. Next up, you have Tony Finau. Now, he already has three top 10 finishes on the PGA Tour this year. You have him next as your DFS play. Yeah, a big reason I'm into Tony Finau for this weekend is because it goes back to what we were discussing before, where after Rory McIlroy, I kind of want to go a bit balanced. And Tony Finau is pretty cheap. He is $10,700. And that's really attractive for a golfer who is as good as Tony Finau. I'm looking at good drive rate this week, and Finau, because he is such a long hitter, he's not the most accurate guy, but his distance allows him to grade out well there. He is awesome on approach and around the green. Now, with Finau, you are getting a negative because he is not a great putter on Bermuda. It is actually his worst surface, so there are definitely some negatives with Tony Finau, but he's so good elsewhere. The hope for me is is that he can make up for it. And he's been doing that for quite a bit now because Fino, ever since like the end of the summer last year, has been ripping things up. So I want to go a bit more balanced. Finau is a bit of a price reduction from guys like Hideki Matsuyama and also uh, Alexander Schauffele, who are in the mid 11,000s. Jumping down to Finau gives you a lot more flexibility to have a more balanced build. And he's not sacrificing upside when you do that because he has shown recently he has the ability to win just needs to finish things out now and lock down that win for sure. But I'm going to take the the slight negatives that come with Tony Finau, load him in here at $10,700, get myself a bit of a more balanced build while still using Rory Macro. I think that Finau is just a, a really good way to get access to a great golfer and not a top tier salary. Tony Finau, put him in your lineup, as Jim just said. All right, the next guy, Tony Finau was the second guy on your list. Now you have Tyrell Hatton. Finished tied for six at the Honda Classic Gym, just five shots off of Patrick Reed's 18 under par. So playing well, at least last week, he played very well. You have him as your next play on the DFS list this weekend. Yeah, we zeroed in on Tyrrell Hatton for the WGC Mexico as well, and that paid off. And the one risk we had with Hatton at that event was, was rust because he had not played in a long time. His wrist had been banged up, so he had been sitting out for a bit. And the one concern you could have had about Hatton was that wrist. 
But he really did answer all those questions we had because, like you mentioned, he was awesome at the WGC Mexico. And he's also really well-rounded, which is what I want to look for in tougher fields. And I do think that the Arnold Palmer does qualify as being such. Hatton is 10th in good drive rate over the past 50 rounds, according to Fantasy National. He is 40th in approach, and he's also 9th around the green. So well-rounded there. But he's also a pretty solid putter on Bermuda. So no big holes in the game. Hatton has a win and three top fives in his past five events. That does include time before the that wrist surgery. So going back a little bit further than you would like, but he again, he showed no rust at the WGC Mexico, gaining 10.6 strokes T to green. I also like Matthew Fitzpatrick. He is just a bit more expensive than Tyrrell Hatton. I think that Byung-Hun An and Mark Leishman are also really fun plays, but Hatton is only $9,900, pretty good for a balanced build as well. So if I can't quite get to guys like Fitzpatrick, like On or Leishman, I think that Hatton is a really good consolation play at $9,900. At 9,900, you just mentioned it with Hatton there as a play. How about 9,200? You have JT Poston there, tied for 35th at the Honda Classic 3 over par last week. What do you like about Poston at this price at $9,200 this week? Yeah, I think for $9,200, you're getting a lot of consistency out of JT Poston, which is not something you're going to find all that often down in this tier, but it also comes with a little bit of upside. You look at Poston in six events since the new year, he has made five cuts. It's not like a tremendous number or anything, but it's good, and he's finished in the top 40 all five times. That is the consistency. But he also has a path to upside because over his past 15 events, he does have five top 20s. He doesn't win in there, too. It was at the Barbasol, which was a secondary event, so not like a rousing endorsement. But hey, you know, it still counts as a win for sure. That's good for Poston. I like guys with safety who at least have a path to upside, even if they're not all that likely to get there. I just want guys who are going to make the cut. Poston seems pretty likely to do that. well round statistically, 33rd in good drive rate, 30th in approach in this field, and 57th around the green. And he is a plus putter on Bermuda, grading out his 18th there the past 100 rounds, according to Fantasy National. So it's not the flashiest profile by any means, but I think it is one that should get through the cut and be around on Sunday. I like that a lot. So JT Poston, not the flashiest play, but one who does make a lot of sense once you're trying to save some salary. Next up, Carlos Ortiz, 8,700, a little bit further down there, Jim. Uh, last played at the WGC Championships, tied for 16th two weeks ago there. So played considerably well for this price at $8,700. What is it about Carlos that you like for this week at that price? Yeah, I think it's first worth mentioning the negatives in Ortiz because there's really only one. He's not a great putter on Bermuda, uh, at least not as good as he is on other surfaces. So that's, that is a slight negative. This is not his best putting surface, but he can make up for that in other areas, especially when he's so cheap at $8,700. The irons are really good with Ortiz. He is 25th in approach the past 50 rounds, according to Fantasy National. He is also 13th around the green, and those are both really good numbers. Now, Ortiz is pretty long off the tee, and that's definitely a good thing. It's not something I'm emphasizing for this week, but it does help, and that leads him to be a, a good player and good drive rate. He is 57th there. The distance is good for the longer holes, too, so he checks a lot of boxes. Ortiz also does have familiarity with this course. He finished 29th here last year. He also enters this event with three straight finishes at 26th or better, and you don't find that very often for $8,700. That event at the WGC Mexico is against a very tough field, so we know he can hang with these big boys out here as well. So I kind of think Ortiz is just the most well-rounded and the best golfer you can find below $9,000, even when you account for the fact this is not his best putting surface. So to me, Ortiz is a really good value play. Even if you go balanced after McElroy, you do need to find some value. And I think that Ortiz is the ideal guy here, $8,700, and I think that he's someone I'll be building around quite a bit for this weekend. Rounding out your DFS plays for this week's Arnold Palmer Invitational. Sebastian Munoz at 8,600, a little bit lower than Carlos Ortiz. He last played the WGC in Mexico City as well. He finished tied for 14th place. So it seems like a very smart play here at that price at $8,600, Sebastian Munoz. Yeah, Munoz kind of goes back to what we were discussing before with JT Poston, where we want to try to find well-rounded golfers we have good, good odds making the cut. I think that's kind of the main appeal here of Sebastian Munoz because he does well everywhere we want him to. He's 24th in approach the past 50 rounds per Fantasy National. 
He's also passable, I would say. He ranks 58th in good drive rate. He's also 49th around the green. So no major negatives in the profile for Munoz. But the thing he adds that Ortiz does not is that Munoz is a good putter on Bermuda. He is 27th there over the past 100 rounds. So he does have a bit more missed cut to his profile than Ortiz has. Maybe a bit more risk here with Munoz than with Ortiz. But I'm pretty comfortable locking in both these guys as value plays, letting me live in that really good mid-range in the high 9,000s and low 10,000s a bit more often than I would otherwise. I think that Bud Colley and Maverick McNeil are also worth mentioning in this range. They're both $8,800, so if you want to diversify, go there. But I think that with Ortiz and with Munoz, you get guys who check a lot of boxes, provide a good amount of safety, but also have a path to upside. I think that that makes them the two ideal value plays for this event. And Munoz is also someone I feel comfortable locking, in, even though he does have a little bit of uh, risk there with the potential to miss a cut. There you have it. The top DFS plays for Jim Sonis this weekend at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Should be a lot of fun when 18 of the top 30 golfers are in action. It all starts on Thursday. Jim Sonis, FanDuel, thank you for the time. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Hopefully things go well for this weekend. We'll talk to you again next week. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. We are joined next by Davis Maddock, DailyRiddle.com, for his best bets at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Coming right back. Welcome back. We are joined now by Davis Maddock from DailyRiddle.com to talk about his six best bets for this week's Arnold Palmer Invitational. What's up, Davis? You know, very excited about the Arnold Palmer Invitational. One of my favorite golfers, favorite courses, super long, super difficult golf course. And it actually is always a really good event to watch on TV as well. So pretty, pretty excited for it. Yeah, and 18 of the top 30 golfers are in action this weekend, so it should be a lot of fun to watch as well. And the guy who's back, world's number one, Rory McIlroy, no surprise you have him as your top play here at 5.5-1 to one to win this tournament. Yeah, so I, I do not bet guys at the very top of the market all that often, but uh, over at DailyRoto.com, we have Rory McIlroy, you know, kind of with an estimated win percentage at this golf tournament of, you know, somewhere around uh, 15%. So even at five and a half to one, Rory is so much better than every other golfer in this field that we still think that it's a really solid number. Next up, Bryson DeChambeau. He's at 18 to one, playing very well this year, already a couple of wins on the tour. He's your second golfer on your list for best bets this week. Bryson DeChambeau at 18 to one. So right now there's a, a pretty interesting thing happening with Bryson, which is that, you know, sites like Daily Roto and Data Golf that do projections for golf are accumulating new data on Bryson. And, you know, the, the betting markets are doing the same thing as well. And it's hard to really give out great prices on a guy who's in the middle of changing his game. And the biggest thing that Bryson has changed year over year is he has added a ton of distance off of the tee. You know, he is hitting the ball as far as Dustin Johnson, as far as Roy McIlroy on some of these drives. And that's not fully priced into his odds quite yet. And, uh, you know, just just like I think he is clearly better than Tommy Fleetwood. I think he's easily in the conversation with Hideki Matsuyama, some of these other elite players. And, you know, I still think we are getting good prices on Bryson to win golf tournaments. How about a little further down the list now, a little bit uh, um, 50 to 1, Billy Herschel. Last time tied for 42nd at the Honda Classic was 5 over. 50 to 1, though, you like those odds for Billy Herschel this week. Yeah, we're getting, uh, you know, another pretty useful number for Billy Horschel, who is just kind of the quintessential above average to her player. He's going to win every few years, especially when his putter gets hot. He uh, does, you know, gain more strokes than the average PGA Tour golfer when putting on Bermuda grass. Uh, you know, I, I think the mid range at this tournament is pretty hard to bet because so much of the win equity is at the top. But this number on Billy Horschel, uh, you know, pretty equitable for the better. A little bit further down there, you have 90 to one Scotty Scheffler uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, played the WGC championship in Mexico City, did not play the Honda Classic, but he's back in action this week. What do you like about Scotty Scheffler at 90 to one? Kind of like that Scotty Scheffler did not play the Honda Classic because uh, it chewed up some guys and spit them out. You know, Victor Hovland, Justin Rose, a couple of these other guys just had really difficult tournaments. Not so for Scheffler, who has great distance off of the tee, uh, you know, has really good game approaching the greens, both stats that we think are super important this week at the uh, at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. So, you know, I just think Scheffler is a really good course fit. And, you know, at 90 to 100 to 1, he's probably underpriced by, you know, 5 to 
Next up, 60 to 1. So you're going a little bit down the list here. Abraham Answer. Last he played was the Mexico City WGC Championships, and he played well. Tied for 12th, nine under for the tournament. 60 to 1. Answer is your next golfer up there for your best bet. Yeah, answer is our uh, best best bet of the week, right? He is our of of this six pack of bets. He is pretty clearly our favorite. Uh, Data Golf has him estimated as you know, uh, you know, ten to fifteen percent off by the odds listed at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Answer really good off the tee, really good approaching the greens, and uh, has actually been an above average putter on the tour this year. You know, he probably is closer to you know a top thirty player on tour then these odds are giving him credit for. So answer is my number one favorite bet of the week. And next on your list, you have to have a long shot, and you're going with Harry Higgs at 150 to 1 to win this tournament this weekend. Yeah, we always have to have a long shot, of course. You know, there's no way we can go into any sort of week without a, without a long shot. Higgs is going to be our guy in this tournament. Another guy who gains strokes off the tee, gains strokes approaching the green. Not great with the putter. But uh, at 150 to 1, you don't have to be great at everything, right? You just have to be good at a, a couple things. Best of luck with your best bets this weekend. Davis Maddock from DailyRoto.com. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Hope that we uh, hope that we come back in with some winners next week. Thank you, Davis, for Davis Maddock and Jim Sonis. I'm Sean Guasamacchia for your FanDuel Hurry Up.